I'm Lieutenant Brooks, Juvenile Division. The story you're about to see is not pleasant, but it's true. It's the story of the hatred of one man for another, because his skin is brown, or his eyes are slanted, or his talk is strange. It's a senseless, but for all that, nonetheless real. This story is happening at this very instant, in towns and cities all over the world, even the city where you live. The attack on Buck Madison served one good purpose. It spur spurred us on to find a new approach to the problem. Two rookies, the youngest officers on the force, were taken straight from the police training course to carry out the plan. This is Frank White, an honorably discharged Army Staff Sergeant, posing as a half Mexican and Negro. I'm Don Walters of American and English ancestry. My father's a retired police captain living in Fresno, California. All right, boys, let's run it once more. Where were you born? Mississippi. What about your parents? They're both dead. Where are you from? Fresno. Aren't you a little old to go to high school? Well, when I joined the Army, I had half a year to go before graduating, so I'm going back to get my diploma. Why? So I can get a good job, make some real dough. What are you doing back here in school? I mean, I got booted out of school, so my old man sends me here. He says I got to make with the geometry and all that jazz. You all do. Come on over here, fella. Now, each one of the 76 attacks took place within a one-mile radius of this particular high school. It's more of a mixture of races in that school than there isn't any other place in the city. Right now, it's ready to go off like an atom bomb. And if it does, there'll be race riots all over the city. There'll be hell to pay. These are the sort of things you'll be up against. Now, when you leave here tomorrow, you're just going to have one job, to find out what or who is causing the trouble. I'll be cruising in the area, but remember, from tomorrow on, I won't know you, you won't know me, and you won't know each other. They'll carry nothing to identify you as police officers. Give me your ID cards and your badges. Here's your receipts. <laughs> education gave us full cooperation and provided the necessary papers such as false transfer certificates for both men. But no one in the high school itself knew they were undercover police officers. Don's job was to infiltrate the white gang bossed by Buck Madison, while Frank was assigned to try to join the Negro gang, the Ebony's. Oh, hey, man, can I get in? Sure. Come on. The protection of the women seems to be one feature of race consciousness everywhere. And this is perhaps as true of Negroes today as of whites. I expect that today there is as much objection to intermarriage among Negroes as among whites. In other words, the black man wants to live in an all-black world, just as much as the white man seems to want to live in an all-white world. And that would hold for the yellow race as well. Many others feel that the black man 
at least in this country, doesn't even have a world of his own. He only shares a small part of the white man's world. He finds his pleasure in white television, white movies, white magazines that depict a white world from which he is practically excluded. We have found that the best way to get a social science class to really dig into this subject is to have an informal debate right here in class. Let's say a week from today, give you time to prepare. The proposition will be resolved that race hatred is a mark of ignorance. The negative team will be Mark Sheldon, Harry Yamamoto. The affirmative team, Frank Serrano, and Lola Montalvo. Classrooms were used for extracurricular activities by students majoring in anatomy. I guess at the library would be the best place to work. Do you want to dig into the stuff together? I'll do my own digging, thanks. I was assigned to crash house parties where sexual excesses were being caused by the indulgence in marijuana. My reports would be acted upon by the police department at a later date in order to preserve my undercover identity. Section. To the left of the archway. Thank you. Well, hi. You seem to have all the books on the subject. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm... Go ahead, help yourself. Thanks. <clears throat> I find that this is a good one to start with. Stay away from my sister. Your sister? Oh, you Manuel Montalvo? Well, what's the beef? No beef so long as you stay away. Look, man, we've just been spending a couple nights together at the library studying. Well, from now on, you study by yourself. No black monkey's gonna play around with Lola. Black monkey? Hey, my name's Serrano. I don't care if your name is Pancho Villa. When you're black, you're black. You stay where you belong. And so, the 
example of the South demonstrates that when one race seeks economic advantage over another, there is no ultimate profit. Both sides are bound to lose, and only ignorance of the consequences could lead to such a course of action. Well? Yeah. But if we want to win this debate, you're going to have to go a lot deeper than just economics. Quote, racial discrimination boils down to economic discrimination, unquote. Are you going to argue with the experts? If this economic thing is so important, why did your brother warn me to stay away from you? I'm not hurting him economically. I'm not keeping him out of a job. I'm not taking bread off of his table. Am I? When did Manuel tell you to stay away from me? This morning. I tell you what it is. Manuel's afraid. Manuel's afraid of you? I think he is. He's afraid of me for the same reason that a lot of whites are afraid of Negroes. Of course, the way he sees it, he's only trying to protect you. From what? From me. You mean you and me? It's oh, impossible. I guess not. It's pretty late. I guess I'd better walk you home. Oh, no, thank you. There's no need. Are you afraid of me, too? You don't know Manuel. He can't get mad at me for making sure you get home safe, can he? Can he? All right. Do you, Fuzz? Don't get fresh with me, you young punk. He finished. Beautiful. Oh. No, 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 Rudy, don't touch. It's still hot. How can you tell when it is finished, Papa? When you've done a thing as well as you can, it is finished. Papa, Rudy, breakfast is ready. Me too. You are up very early for one who was kept out so late by the police. Must we talk about that now, Papa? Papa? No. Now we shall talk. My own daughter. Mixed up in gang violence and kept up all night by the police. Lola, who beat up that Serrano boy? I told you, Papa. The 
was dark. Serrano, a Mexican name. But for that, I would suspect you, Manuel. Uh, why do you pick on me all that time? Why don't you ask her why she sneaks out nights? What do you mean? Those nights you sneak out of the house while Papa's working in the shop. When you think no one's watching you. What about that, huh? That is none of your business, Manuel. That's right, it's none of my business because it's monkey business. Black monkey business. It's not. Maybe it's another color monkey, huh? Maybe it was a white monkey. What do you think you... Ah, oh, always at school you're making eyes at the Yanglos. Mexicans aren't good enough for you, are they, Lola? Manuel! And you too, Lola. Let your hearts grow bigger, not smaller. What does it get you, Papa, this bigness of heart? What did it get you when you married Mama? You do not understand. I understand. Mama's family's so ashamed to never speak to her again just because she married a Mexican. You talk about bigness of heart. What did it get you, Papa? You got me your mother's love, Manuel. Beautiful. Yes, Rudy. She was very beautiful. That's what Manuel says. Manuel remembers. Perhaps he remembers too well. I, Mrs. Gonzalez Lamb. to deliver Mrs. Gonzalez lamb today. Will you bring it to her on your way to school? Okay, okay. Madison, what do you want in this part of town? Take it easy, Manuel. Take it easy. I come over to talk business. Or maybe you ain't interested in making an easy buck, huh? Talk some more. Well, it's like this, see. I got a real good thing. But I can't bust into the spick market. I mean the Mexican market. And that's where you come in. And get your cut. What do you sow? Grass. To hell with that. <laughs> Go ahead, say it. You're a sucker, Manuel. Manuel! Do you forget Mrs. Gonzalez's lamp? I'm taking it, I'm taking it. Don't come back here with your business. Like my looks. Who was it? Manuel Montalvo. I might put you in good with the Ebony's. That's what I'm hoping. I hope you like your work. I've had worse. What about you? Not so good. You know those royals.
Hey, uh, fast. Hey, you need a, a swinging cat? For what? For the Ebony's man. The Ebony's is colored. Yeah, man, I know. We don't take no Mex guys. Did you see this? You see this? You know who did that? The Mex guys. Tough. Satch. I'm half colored. Now it's too bad you can't fix that other half. We might let you win. Sandwiches. I'm really not very hungry. Here, Helen. I have an extra one. So go on. So anyway, I told him I saw Bill over in the corner, you know, and I motioned him to come and get me. So the guy, you know, and he tapped him on the shoulder in the car. The guy said, oh, no, and I said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, what is it? I want to talk about us. Lola, you know I can't do anything about us. Not right now, anyway. Don't you still love me? Night. Something came up. It's two nights in a row you couldn't make it. I miss you, Jimmy. How much longer do we have to go on like this? I can't do anything until I get out of the Royals. You know how they are about... About Mexicans? You know how it is. I'm telling you, you're gonna leave the Royals, but you sure don't do anything about it. Like I told you, I just can't say I'm quitting. Nobody does that to Buck and Addison. Did Buck make you do something again last night? Is that why you didn't pick me up? He didn't make me do anything. I think you spend more time with Buck than you do with me. Jimmy, he's no good for you. Oh, Buck's all right. He is not all right. He's bad. He's all bad. You know that. Jimmy, I'm glad I'm in love with you. I'm proud of it. And I hate keeping it a secret as if we were ashamed of it. And I don't like this living like two cats in the night. You go on out. I'll be out in a minute. Nobody will know we were in here together. All right, muscles, where's the rest of it? Look, I think I should get a bigger cut this time. The gang got a lot of stuff. We got some tires, a battery, three car radios. We got some liquor from that store we busted into the wall. So? You know, been using my house ever since my old lady started working. I'd say I ought to get something for that. You want us to get another pad? Well, no, it's okay then. Hand it over. You get a bigger cut when I say you get a bigger cut, all right? All right.
Where are you going, Shelby? To class, if you'll get out of my way. You know, Muscle, some of these spick chicks ain't bad. You ain't just kidding. Let's see how it is, chick. Why not? Stop him. Sorry. Why, oh, you dirty nigger, I'll teach you to keep up my way. Here, here, what's going on? Nothing. I tripped. down on business, so we decided to spend a few days. I thought we were going to the ball game Saturday. Oh, business comes first. Huh? Oh, here. There's 20 bucks. You go ahead and go to the game. Take a friend along. Sure. You'll be careful driving this, this thing, won't you, Winnie, dear? Yeah, I'll stick to 15 miles an hour and stay clear of the fuzz. The fuzz? What in the world is that? I believe that's the beat generation's name for the police. Oh, Winnie, dear, I wish you'd stop using those vulgar beatnik expressions. No, I can't stand them. Sorry. And fix yourself a nice lunch before you go back to school, hmm? Yeah. Oh, son, do me a favor before we get back. Get yourself a haircut before somebody makes a pass at you. like you said. Well, you just tell Jimmy to wait out in the kitchen like you said. <laughs> yeah, take your motor off, Wiggles. I'll be right back. Cigarette. 
Grass? Yeah, grass. Marijuana. I don't go for it. Why not, Jimmy boy? You deliver it. Oh, yeah, that's the same stuff you took to Smokey's place for me last night, the Eddie's the night before. But I didn't know. <laughs> as far as the law cares, Jimmy boy, you're a narcotics peddler. Whether you know it or not. That's a federal rap, Jimmy boy. I got plans for you, Jimmy boy. Yeah. We need pushers. Not me, Buck. And you're elected. Hey, man, you're wearing my jacket. So wear mine. I like the way this one fits. I gotta see a guy. Oh, and Jimmy boy, don't go away. I gotta tell you, no smoking while you're watching. I, I forgot. Get back in the house. Sure, bud. Go on. Gee, thanks. like the Madison boy. If your tips is right, that should be Scratch's car. It is. You got the grass? We'll see the Scratch. It's all there, Mr. Elliot. You're not pushing much stuff, kid. Oh, I'm doing the best I can, Mr. Elliot. Well, you'd better work faster or you're out. Look, I'm working on it. Things will change, I promise you that. I got an idea. Look, I gave you the idea last week. You get those Mexicans and those lousy colored boys mad at each other. What's the matter, Mr. Elliot? You sound like you don't like them. I just don't like black. Look, you start some rumbles between the Ebony's and the Caballeros. Some of them always want a few drags just to build up their courage. Yeah, 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 you're right, you're right, Mr. Elliot, you're right. How are you making out with the Mexican gang? Well, it ain't easy, see. They, they do whatever Manuel Montavo says, and he says no grass. So, get the manual. Well, I'm working on it. Look, he's got a sister, see. And I got the guy she's real gone for. And I got him right where I want him to. All right. But let's see some results. Yes, sir, Mr. Elliot. Yes, sir. Want a tail scratch? No. I know where to find him. Look, you know how we work in narcotics. Spot the contact, and then we move in. But we're not ready yet. Yeah, but this isn't just a narcotics case. This is a juvenile case, too. If Buck did make a pickup from scratch, you think I can sit here and just let him parcel it out among those kids in there? But we don't know that he made a pickup. We will in a few minutes. We'll give him a couple of minutes to get set, and then we'll move in. Hey, Buck, uh, how about a beer? Outside. Gee, Buck. Go on! Muscles, lock the door. Tell you what I want you to do, Jimmy boy. You're pretty hard on Manuel's sister, ain't you? Yeah, well, I've played around there. Just for kicks. 
you can sure get your kicks. She likes you, huh? Yeah. Yeah, well, go get it and bring her here. Here? What for? I want to take a picture. What? A picture Manuel wouldn't want anybody else to see. You dig me? Oh, gee, Buck, I, I don't think you ought to do it. You mean you want to do time for pushing? Hmm? After we work you over? All right, all right, all right, I'll get her, I'll bring her here. Yeah, yeah, I figured you would, Jimmy boy. Go on. Because yellow enough to think. He won't. Well, you know he won't. Because I said he wouldn't. You want to make something out of it? But what's the matter with you? Just because we've been using this lousy dump of yours as a pad, you've been acting like you want to run this organization. I'm just saying, supposing he goes to the five. All right, then. Go on and follow him. Where's Jimmy? Down there. Hello? Is Lola there? Lola? No, no, she is. She is not at home. Who, who inquires for her? Just a friend. Just a friend. Okay, thanks. I'm moving in. Wait, no search warrant, no evidence? Damn, the technicalities. If we break in there, they'll get rid of this stuff. And if I can keep just one kid from taking his first drag, it'll all be worth it. Are you coming? All right. What else? Whose house is this? <laughs> Where's the owner? Maybe I'm written. You got a search warrant? You're getting pretty wise, aren't you, Buck? Wise enough, Fuzz. <laughs> How old are you? Uh, 28. Uh, you want a bet? Yeah, I want a bet. Come on, the party's over. Oh, okay. Come on, everybody out. The party's over. Get moving. Uh, yeah, you can't break up this party. You got no right. File a complaint. Yeah. You too. All right. Okay. I'll be seeing you, Buck.
find us what's here. Yeah, no, I saw on my way that side till I left. Yeah, yeah somebody think. Yeah. Jimmy, we're right to a phone. You wouldn't listen to me, I warned you. You shut your mouth. Lola's not home, she's gone out. Where is everybody? So you finally got some guts, huh, Jimmy boy? It was an accident. Yeah, sure, Buck. Yeah. Let's get out of here. Possible Monroe couldn't have done such a thing. We found this last night at the scene of the crime, Miss Montalvo. That's not Manuel's. His name is engraved on the back. They like that dame. You can't blame her for sticking up for her brother. 
Why does Manuel hate anybody who isn't a Mexican? Who says so? The facts say so. You remember a couple of nights ago, a boy named Frank Serrano started to take you home from the library? Manuel and his gang worked him over just because he was half Negro. We know Manuel hates anyone except Mexicans. Maybe what happened to Jimmy Wallace happened for the same reason. Maybe Manuel killed him because he liked you and because he was an Anglo. That's not true. You were dating Jimmy? No. Why don't you question Buck Madison? Why should we? Because Jimmy was scared to death of him. Because he was trying to get out of the Royals and was too afraid to let Buck know it. For your information, Miss Montalvo, we've already questioned Buck. We can't throw people in jail on your say-so. Besides, there isn't a shred of evidence to connect him with it. Then I'll get the evidence. Now, wait a minute. If there's any evidence, we'll get it. You stay out of this. How are you going to stop me, Lieutenant? Are you going to put me in jail? Or can I go now? Don't go too far. All right, boys, come on in. That lad will give you some idea of what we're up against. I can't hold Manuel more than another day without a complaint. If I go to the DA with nothing more than this, the chief will have my hide. Well, do you think he killed the Wallace kid? I don't know. But when I get a witness who's lying, I can feel it. And that girl's lying. You don't agree, eh, Serrano? Well, sir, she may be trying to cover for her brother. I think she's a very loyal person, but... Manuel doesn't strike me as a killer. Maybe. You were turned down by the Ebony's, but that girl seems to like you. Let's play this by the Braille system. Use your friendship for the girl to get in with the family. Find out what you can. Wallace, I think I've got an angle for you to get into the Royals. Narcotics. We're pretty sure Buck Madison's a pusher, but we can't prove it. Find out. Yes, sir. And remember, it may be up to you two guys to solve this killing. That's all. That's enough. <laughs> but the greatest puzzle is why we deny ourselves so much for fear of so little. When we deny a man's rights to sit where he pleases in a public bus, we deny ourselves freedom to sit with him. When we keep a man out of a job just because of his color, we deny ourselves his talent and his skill. When we deny a man the right to vote, we deny ourselves the benefit of his wisdom. When we deny a child... When, when we deny a child his rights to equal schooling, we deny ourselves the benefits of the greatness he can never achieve in his ignorance. If we deny a man, if we deny his right to stand beside us as our equal, we make him an enemy. We deny ourselves his friendship. We deny ourselves love. We... We... <laughs> Are you all right? Can I sit down? Seen the girl? That way. Hey, feed it, Buzz. Become my friends. 
good luck. Brush off bit. All I want to do is join the Royals. You don't look tough enough for the Royals. Well, now maybe I'm tougher than I look. Maybe you're afraid to find out how tough. Okay. Muscles, give them the entrance exam. I got some business to take care of. Sure. Come on, guys. Come on, sport. Hi there. Hello. Mind if I walk along? We seem to be headed the same way. I don't think we are. Sorry. question on my exam? Uh-huh. So far you're failing. You want to ask you another? No. Not until I answer that one. Next question? You were lucky that time. See, answer this. Oh, Buck leaves you all the dirty work, doesn't he? What? Like this. All I want to do is join the Royals. You got no beef. You know, maybe you're just the guy I'm looking for. For what? I'm in business. I need a partner. You could be just the guy. What kind of business? A little business like I had up in Fresno. All I need is a contact so I can start buying the stuff here. What stuff? You know, grass, snow, age. Man, it's easy to build a business around a school. I don't know nothing about that. Uh, that ain't healthy. Have one? How do I know you ain't with the fuss? Uh, would I be standing here like this? You know, you look like a pretty smart guy. You're tough. I know the business, you got the contacts. You know, maybe you're not getting such a good deal with Buck. I ain't saying I ain't. We could cut him clear out. I ain't saying yes, you understand. Yeah, sure, Muscles. You just think it over. You just think it over, Muscles. Hi, guys. What you doing, huh? Oh, now, come on, now. You don't want to be scared of me. Which one is George? That's my name. You Satchel's brother? I'll show you I'm a good guy, George. Put the knife away. Go on, put the knife away. Yeah, have a cigarette. Go on, have one. All of you. Go on! I don't look like no cigarette. Sure it is. 
I ain't supposed to smoke. What's the matter, kid? You want me to think you ain't a pal of mine, huh? No, I'm real friendly. Okay, then have a cigarette. Come on, sit down. What is it? What's wrong? Go away. Can I help? <laughs> oh, Jerry. Jerry. What am I going to do, Frank? Why can't I do? Sorry. I'm all right now. Now 
Thank you for understanding. You're welcome. There's no place where I could let go. Not even at home? Especially not at home. Your family didn't even know that you were seeing the Wallace boy, did they? You look a mess. Did Manuel know? Frank, I'd rather not talk about it. How come you never date any Mexican guys, Lola? Oh, I do sometimes. At school, they say you don't. What difference does it make? I just wondered what you had against them. You're beginning to sound like... Manuel? Did you hear something? Stand up. That's Satchel's little brother. Is he hurt? I don't know. Do you know where he lives? I'll show you. Come on, fellow. We're going to get you home. What they do to you? Oh, Satchel, I fell off. The boy's sick, Satch. What got him sick? I don't know, man. A cigarette. Buck made me smoke it. Buck? What sort of cigarette was it? Was it kind of twisted with brown paper? I do know. How come you bring him? Would you rather I left him there? Come on, George, you're going home. Hey, you, Mets boy. Thanks. Yes, yes, of course. I understand, Lieutenant. Thank you very much, Lieutenant Brooks. Well? He says they have found no new evidence and they're still holding Manuel. What about Buck, Papa? They still have no reason to arrest him. No reason. No reason? She's very bitter. She must have been pretty fond of Jimmy Wallace. I don't know. She's the Anglos rather than the Mexicans. I guess she thinks it's a step up. She only looks for happiness. Have you lived in this neighborhood long, Mr. Montalvo? Uh, many years. Shortly after Elena and I were married, I established this little business. You know, I learned it from my father's trade and uh, before coming to America. I have tried to teach it to my son, but he is not interested. What about Manuel? He seems so, well, mixed up. Manuel blames his mother's parents for her death, and so he has come to hate all Anglos. How did his mother die? My wife, Elena. Papa, thank you. Oh, Rudy, go ask your sister to open up a bottle of wine, eh? Yes, Papa. We must make our guests welcome. 
My wife Elena was very ill. She was in need of medical treatment that we, we could not afford. And I was too proud to go to her parents and ask for help. I was sure that my love could pull her through, but it did not. Elena was beautiful and gentle. And I loved her very much. But perhaps, perhaps without even knowing it, I felt that for me, she was a step up. So you see, I too am to blame for what my children have become. But I no longer hurt others with my bitterness. I burn it into my work. Papa, Lulu's gone. Huh? Gone? Lulu's gone. She's not there. I do not understand. Why would she go without telling us? And where? I can think of one reason. Rudy, do you know where the Royals hang out? Sure. At Gabby's Grill. You're not going to go there, are you? I sure am. Oh, but you're not. Sure can't use muscles, please. Not after that dumb raid the other night. Look, bud, I have to leave. Oh, no, no, wait a minute, Mr. Elliot. Please, just a minute. Hey, why don't you use my joint? It makes a great pad when the folks are out of town. Yeah, yeah, where is it? It's, it's on Maricopa at 9.15. Hey, well, how about that, Mr. Elliot? You can meet me over there in a few minutes and we can take care of our business, huh? All right. I'll be there in an hour. Fine. Good night, Mr. Elliot. I want a beer. Baby, where we're going, you're gonna drink nothing but champagne. Ho, ho, ho. Ain't that right, Winnie, huh? You said it, man. I've been waiting for this black boy. What do you want to do with him, Buck? Integrate him. <laughs> <laughs> That's what all you guys want, isn't it? To be integrated? Get me that can out of the car. Yeah, man. <laughs> What's the idea of turning my car over, huh? Ask your girlfriend. What do you mean? Ask her. Ask her what? Ask her how come she don't never let you pick her up at her house. What are you trying to say, huh? Ask her how come you ain't never met her, folks.
You're black. You're black. Oh, you're black. You're black. What is this, an international settlement? Yeah. Coffee. This ain't no Mex hangout. I know. Oh, you mean you've decided to play? You can call it that. You're just in time, baby. Because we're going to have ourselves a ball. Okay? Okay. Finished, Don? Yeah, sure. Well, I'll, I'll get the check. I guess this is yours. trying to say? I found it in Lola's dresser. Rudy, how often do I tell you, leave people's things alone. Leave things alone. I was just looking for a safety pin. It's from a doctor. Uh, pardon me, was Buck Madison here tonight? Yeah, he and his whole gang left just a little while ago. And owing me a lot of money. Was there a Mexican girl with them? Yeah. Well, um, do you know where they went? I don't know. That's that, that girl over there. I'm on the walking. I'm coming down this Can you tell me where the royals went? Why should I? Why not? You a friend of Buck? I'm a friend of that Mexican girl. Boyfriend, or are you just a friend? Look, if you know where they are, please tell me. Yeah. Yeah. I think you and Buck ought to become acquainted. 915 Maricopa. Thank you. Hey, you guys want to take a dip in the pool right over there? It's the 
pool. Let's see that wine cellar. <laughs> <laughs> Our nearest neighbors are two blocks yeah, away. Right. Forget it. Oh, Forget it. Come on. Come on. Mm. A house that's all paid for. No wheels under it, either. Excuse me, but please, can you tell me, has Laura Montalva been here? Hey, Pops. Don't you think you're a little bit old to be chasing around that kind of stuff? Anyway, truck driving wasn't so bad. I used to get up in the morning, get out on the highway. I am her father. Oh. And, uh, do you want to know where she is? I would be very grateful for that information. We're gonna have kind of a big party over there. 915 Maricopa. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, my son. Now go home. But Papa! No, but go home. But Papa! 9.15, Maricopa. Can I have a cup of coffee, please? We don't cater to... Uh, I have one on the house. I'll bring it to you right away. For you, Winnie. You're in, boy. You're in. Oh, gee, thanks, bud. Hey, what do you say, gang? Huh? All right, keep on playing. <laughs> Baby, let you and me get away from this mom. Huh? Wait. Not yet. Listen, your radiator's boiling over. <laughs> yeah. I boil real easy. Be right back. Uh, we ought to talk to your friend after he and Buck finish. Just you and me. Okay.
What are you calling who? Manuel, you have escaped. No, they let me go. I took a lie detector test. What's wrong? Come quick. Go to La Papa. The Royal's got a 915 Mayor Cooper. Manuel, Manuel, can we go? No, 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 no. You stay here. Street in Oakland, cuts it himself. Anything else? No. I'll get you some more grass in 15 minutes. Okay. It's a good honey. Only the best. I'll see you later. We don't buy anything there. I do not sell. I wish to speak with Lola Montalvo. Hey, gang. Daddy wants to join the party. Yeah? Josie? Yeah? Pop wants to rock. Well, come on, Pop. Make it, Dad. Come on. I'm not arguing with you. We're getting out of here. No! Look, do you know what Buck will do to you if he finds out why you're here? Well, somebody has to prove that he murdered Jimmy. That is your theory. Oh, really? Look, what's it to you anyway? You didn't love Jimmy. You just wanted to marry an Anglo. Any Anglo! <laughs> Baby, where you been? I've been looking all over for you. Uh, hey, what you dragging my jacket around for, huh? I'm cold. Hey, Buck, come here, it's a real riot. Yeah. I do this for the Come on, Lord. Hey, 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 watch who you're throwing around, you dirty little mess. You just leave him alone. Lola. Oh, what's the old bag of crumbs to you anyway? He's my father. 
Oh, no, no, no! Easy, easy, tiger. You have no business here. Nor do you, my daughter. You don't understand. Hey, I understand. Entiendo más de lo que crees. No, papá. Si Rudy encontró la tarjeta del doctor, vas a tener un niño. Niño? Baby. Oh, I'll bet you didn't tell Buck that, did you? Hey. What's she talking about? Oh, I dig some of the Spanish. She's gonna have a baby. <laughs> Is that right? You gonna have a baby, huh? Yeah. Jimmy Wallace's baby. The baby of the man you murdered. You can't hang that rap on me. They already tanked your brother for I it. I can prove it. Go ahead. There's a button torn off your jacket. The police have it. It was found beside Jimmy's body. They've been looking for this jacket. So what? That ain't no skin off my back. Here, Muscles. Take your jacket. It is yours. I got it from you. I borrowed it from Muscles. Ain't that right, champ, huh? Uh, you ain't pinning no murder rap on me. Hold it, Muscles. I'm a police officer. <laughs> Hold it, Mario! I don't see no gun on this, Fuzz. Let's take it! Hold it, Buck, I got one. Now back off. I ain't taking no murder rap with Buck. I was there, all right, but he was the one that hit him. He killed him, he killed him. Oh, you Buck, you Buck! All right, everybody, against this wall. Okay, come on, let's go, everybody over. Hey, uh, Scratch, uh, have you got the stuff? Uh, okay, you're under arrest, Mr. Elliot. Drop the gun. I said drop it! It sounds more like a revolution. You're not kidding. This is Lieutenant Brooks, 915 Maricopa. It's a 415. Send a squad. Better make it two squads. One single thing, any of you? Mean people. Like Scratch. 
buck here. I'll do it to you every time. Unless you wise up. There are a million kids just like you all over the country. We could just bring a couple of you to his senses. When are you gonna wake up? Now what, Lola? What are you going to do? Oh, I don't know. Nothing matters. Nothing in the world matters. You matter. I hope I do. I like to think that everybody does. You mean Spicks and Anglos and Ebony's and all the in-betweens? Yes. And what we've got to learn, everybody, that we're all the same under the sky. I guess I know that. But here I am. The baby? It doesn't take long to learn to love a baby, no matter who is. I hope you'll let me see you again. Would you let me put that the other way around? <laughs> <laughs> 